each and every one of us is on a journey and we feel that it's important to be on that journey with the people you love. If you accept that this mistreatment is widespread, it is so damning. It is such an indictment. It's not just, it's an indictment of the entire, what they call the chain of trust from the, the, the pseudoscientists to the practitioners, to the associations, to the news media, psychologists, psychiatrists, the institutions, Surgeons. every, every, sur I mean, every Pharmaceutical institution. companies. Yep. Yeah, pharma yep. drug companies. The indictment is so serious and it goes right in your, your, I'm, I'm very excited to talk to you about it all, Jordan, because I think that it really goes to just the, the rotting away of the core restraints the society used to impose, the, 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 the guardrails, you know, the gatekeeping. And what's, I want to clarify one thing, by the way, which is that in the files, they don't talk about gender distress. That's more neutral language that some of the people in the gender critical movement use. They just think they're all trans. If you are someone that expresses confusion about your gender identity, the assumption is that you are trans. And it clearly comes right out of the gay rights movement where there was a sense in which, and this is, I think, what's been so, you know, um, that the heart of a lot of it for how liberals accepted it was that I think a lot of us accepted gay relationships and same-sex relationships and the innateness of them. And so when it came to trans, it basically was just the application of this rule of innateness onto trans. There was never a question that there was a misdiagnosis and a mistreatment Two separate things, by the way, misdiagnosis and mistreatment. And then when you kind of, when it just runs away and it's like, you know, the front page, you know, the cover of Time magazine and it's all the, ma everybody's talking about, this is the new form of liberation. And then you had, as you were saying, there's different characters, right? There's the, there's the psychopaths and the narcissists who are, who are the bullies and they're sort of mesmerized. The narcissists are mesmerizing people. The psychopaths are bullying people. And then the, all of the nice guys, all of the kind liberals, the compassionate, caring liberals cave in and, and they kind of go, I can't deal with it. So that I'm talking about the journalists, the medical associations, the other doctors. It is the Democrats, is just, the Democrats, the liberals. I mean, it yeah, is yeah. it is a just an absolutely shocking cowardice, dogma, psychopathologies. You know, you look at the people Don't that are really... Don't forget sadism. Don't yeah, forget and that, sadism. Yeah. I mean, That's it's a fun just, addition. Uh, yeah. You know, we're going to write... I mean, there's, there's, there, were gonna be, there will be books written about this episode. There, I mean, I don't want to race ahead to looking back. I don't, part of me, that may be my coping mechanism. This all has to be stopped. I mean, this is... I will say, and you probably will probably get to it, but you one week after we released the WPATH files... Britain's National Health Service came out and finally banned puberty blockers in all of its clinics. The Times of London then came out the next day. This is a center-left newspaper. They called this quack medicine in the lead editorial. They called for expanding the ban. They were worried, they are worried, as we should be, that puberty blockers are still going to be prescribed in private clinics. But you could see with the WPATH files, the NHS decision, I see a huge opening where finally people that had, I think, including me, that had been sort of quiet on this, maybe a little bit like unsure, is this my role to speak out on this? Finally going, no, this is absolutely bonkers and has to be stopped. This is a, this is a, yeah, maybe the greatest medical mistreatment scandal of the last, you know, 100 years, 200 years, I don't know. Um, yeah, we it's have hard to, to, we it's have hard to, to, it's hard to identify a worse one. You know, it's hard I to mean, identify a worse it's one. Like, it's like Unit 7, what was it, Unit 713? The Japanese, uh, that's Japanese medical experiments on, on the mm -hmm. Chinese when they invaded. That's the worst, that's the worst of the horrors that I've ever uh, familiarized myself with. This is at that level. And that's yep. really something. It's, it's because the nitty gritty of the details of this are so shocking that you can't believe it's true. You just with can't it, with it, with, and also one one other final detail, uh, the per, the picture is oh yeah we're doing all the science that people will they'll, they'll in these in these conversations the doctors will say well I don't know I mean we haven't seen anybody really come in to complain with us at least the people we followed up with over the few weeks after the surgeries there's like not only is there no serious study or follow up of the victims of these mistreatments they they're not interested. 
It's a complete abdication of responsibility by everybody involved. Nobody even chimed in and said, hey, maybe we should follow up with these people. What about the person that had tumors on their on their liver? Maybe we should find that person. We did not see this anywhere in the files. Like nobody piped up and tried to take responsibility. It was a complete abdication of responsibility. It was just, it's just this kind of mania that we have, we're gonna mess with people's bodies and then we don't care what happens afterwards. It's almost like they're getting a hedonic pleasure from it and then they're done with it.